My name is Kristen Lydra and I'm a biologist at the University of Washington in Seattle. I study the ecology and population biology of marine mammals in the Arctic and most of my work has been focused on the narwhal. So studying narwhals definitely comes with its challenges. Narwhals uh, prefer to be in offshore habitat, in dense ice, and they spend most of their time at pretty deep depths, diving down to uh, over 4,000 feet below the sea surface. These whales are also very shy and skittish, so they really notice anything that's strange, um, such as boats or footprints on the ice or any movements or noises that are, are kind of out of the ordinary and that uh, sends them swimming far away very fast and making them difficult to observe. A lot of my work has been conducted on uh, narwhals in the pack ice, which is the offshore ice far from the coastline. So to access the narwhals, we will fly in a helicopter out over the ice about um, 50 to 100 miles and find the leads and cracks where narwhals spend the winter. Then what we do is we land the helicopter on the ice and try to uh, work in an area where the narwhals are still surfacing and haven't been scared away by the noise of the helicopter and observe them, tag them, and make acoustic recordings. Narwhals are a, a very uniquely adapted Arctic marine mammal. They're, they're really Arctic specialists in a number of ways. And so studying these animals really gives us not only a feel for um, sort of unraveling scientific mysteries, but also how they are responding to the physical changes that we've seen in the Arctic, such as changes in sea ice loss, the breakup timing of the ice or the freeze-up timing, as well as bigger changes in the ecosystem that come with a general warming Arctic.